Wow, would you have a gander at Mother Nature's own little bonsai garden? How beautiful is this? This is a bog, and bog ecosystems are often overlooked because of their soggy soils, small trees, and sometimes funky smells, but these ancient ecosystems are a super important carbon store, biodiversity hub, and in general are pretty dang neat. Here, layers of sphagnum moss will develop in natural divots in the landscape over centuries, like we can see here, which slows and restricts the flow of water, causing it to become highly anaerobic and highly acidic as things decompose very slowly. And as a result, very few trees can grow here, and those that do often have shallow roots that either don't dive too deep into those acidic waters or are very tolerant and able to grow in poor soil conditions like yellow cedar and shore pines. Eventually, though, after enough time, hummocks will form around the bases of these trees as things begin to grow and stack up on the mosses just above the water table, like this crowberry we have here in Labrador Tea, eventually tapering off into muskeg forests of hemlocks, red cedars, and spruces where more soil is present, creating a really unique, vibrant, and diverse ecosystem that takes hundreds to thousands of years to evolve, which technically means that this is an old growth forest, though this probably looks a lot different from the old growth forest you imagine in your head. See, Low productivity old growth forests like this one here or anything with a site index of less than 20 makes up over 80% of the remaining old growth forests left in the province. Meanwhile, the remaining high productivity old growth forests with a site index of over 25, you know, those ones that contain those amazing, massive trees and immense biodiversity you see all over tourism ads and industries, greenwashed posts, were down to 2.7% of their historic numbers or less than 1% of all the forests in BC about four years ago, yet they've still been actively logged and continue to be logged today. So that number is significantly lower and the situation in the states unfortunately is even worse. Now since there is little demand to log these older, smaller, less productive forests, they disproportionately make up a majority of protected forest areas while the few remaining higher productivity forests continue to be logged. Now that's not to say that forests like these aren't worth protecting. I mean they certainly are for their carbon storage and sequestration values, but that their protection is often used as a misleading greenwash veil to the fact that the larger, more biologically diverse and ecologically complex forests are still falling, when what we need is proportionate protections for all forest types to ensure healthy biodiversity, ecological and climate functions are preserved in an uncertain future. It's almost as if the government has more interest in protecting the industry status quo and those in positions of power than it does protecting our forests, our future, and doing what the people they were elected to serve actually want. But what do I know? I'm just a guy who likes trees.